Hey guys, so today I am going to be covering a common topic on this channel, one that we've been talking about quite regularly, and that's the idea about de-googling your life. Uh, many of us sort of have been trying to do this over the past few years, and I'm certainly not the only YouTuber I know who has been taking steps to remove Google products and to find alternatives in the marketplace uh, for a number of reasons, um, partly because it's specifically talking about the search engine, I think that it's incredibly dangerous that even the fact that the term Googling is a verb because it kind of means that the vast majority of people are now relying on this one avenue from this one company to get pretty much all of their knowledge, or at least the vast majority of it, and that gives one company an, a tremendous amount of power. Uh, Google clearly are the dominant market force in this department, and they also get to decide what you see and in essence, how you see it. And Google have been fined for manipulating their search algorithm before, but there isn't actually anyone at the Google company that even knows how the algorithm works, how it's put together, and that, that it sort of changes depending on your search history, depending on the Google products you use, and all the other kind of stuff that, you know, no one even really fully knows all of the factors that go into your Google search results. So to commit the degree of trust that we tend to, to this one search engine, to me strikes me as just being incredibly dangerous, moreover, anything else. So the uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about how I've been trying to move trying to move away from as many Google products as possible. But first, of course, comes the standard disclaimer that you are probably watching this video on YouTube, and. Um, as such, I have completely failed to move away from all of the uh, Google services because there is no video platform quite like YouTube. Um, yeah, I can use maybe things like BitTorrent or BitTorrent-based technologies, and a mirror of this uh, channel is available on BitChute, but i got to say, I don't really put too much faith in BitChute as a platform. If you go over to that website and you look at some of the channels that I'm shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder with, they're incredibly questionable, and you often find that services like BitChute shoot often provide a home for people that have been booted out elsewhere and you do kind of end up with a saturation of people that you don't really want to be on the same platform with all the time if I'm completely honest but I'm gonna let you go over there and see for yourself but again it's not a Google platform and it is an alternative and of course you can embed those videos into other websites and other platforms so it's not necessarily as bad as all that but YouTube is still the place to go. Twitch is kind of catching up, but then again, is Amazon really that much better than Google? In some ways, yes, because a lot of Google, uh, Amazon's business model focuses around people actually paying for stuff, and when you're paying for stuff, you're, there is less of an incentive to, say, mine you for information, for example. It often also means that uh, it does, because the monetization factors are often more favorable, it does mean that there is generally less pressure on the uh, consumer to be as valuable. I, uh, I should go into that in another video, but the dynamics of sort of crowdfunding through things like Patreon and the, you know, the tip system through uh, through uh, Amazon and Twitch, um, and also, you know, some of the other sort of ad revenues through, through Amazon do seem to be a little bit more stable and a little bit more sustainable than perhaps the AdSense model that you get from Google, which basically um, is powered by your information. There's no two ways about it, and I do have a problem with that, which is why I do offer Patreon as a as a, as a revenue um, alternative for this channel. And a few of you have actually taken me up on that and just put a small and nominal amount towards the Patreon as a um, as a way of saying thank you for the content without actually having to turn off your ad blocker for obvious reasons. I mean, it's obviously ads are an issue, and uh, you know, ads waste your time. Um, ads, you know, are invasive in terms of your personal data. So, you know, I'm not going to tell you what you should or shouldn't do with your browser extensions. But um, thank you for helping me pay the bills. So, uh, uh, so yeah, I've got to get that one out of the way because there is no video platform quite like YouTube just yet. I'm hoping one will come around shortly, but. Uh, the thing is, the you know video infrastructure just requires so much money and capital capital behind it, and it really seems to work best when it's when it's this big monolithic big monolithic structure, uh, because that way it's you know it's more easily monetizable as well as of course. Uh, being sort of more more stable. Like, I mean, you know, other video platforms come and go all the time. YouTube, we ha know with a degree of certainty, will be here for the foreseeable future. It's a safe home for these videos. 
even taking into account all of the costs. So with that aside, I actually have been doing reasonably well at actually moving away from Google products in a wider capacity. So I'm going to go through uh, some of the big services and, um, and let you know how I've been getting on. My solutions aren't going to work for everyone, but the, you know, I'm just throwing ideas around now. So let's start off with the big one, which is Gmail. Now, Gmail obviously provide the email capacity for uh, for the Google services, and it's you know it is a really good email platform. Again, no two ways about it. But I have been using Postio. Postio, uh, if you go to postio.de, because it is a German company, uh, they charge one euro a month, and you can pay upfront in cash or through cards and stuff like that. Um, and it gives you uh, a really good standard email service. It has really, really, really good support. Uh, it uses open source technology. It uses renewable energy. It has really, really, really good workers' rights programs and so forth. Um, and and you know treats their staff really well. It's nice to have a you know a direct line to your email provider if there's something you're not sure about. If there's something that goes wrong. So. Um, but in terms of, of like actual physical features, they mainly reside in things like encryption and security, which, whereas they're quite useful, uh, a lot of people, including myself, don't actually have the need for day-to-day -day, um, hardcore encryption because most of my emails are incredibly dull and boring. However, I do like to reserve the right to be able to use encrypted email, and I think that's the important thing here, is that I am not a particularly private person. I put a lot of my thoughts out there on camera, and... Um, so, so yeah, like, I mean, for me to then sort of claim uh, privacy, at least in all aspects of my life, is going to be a little bit inconsistent, I guess. But again, I still think that I'd like to um, maintain, um, you know, I'd like to support businesses that do support, uh, you know, rights to privacy, because those businesses, I think, you know, they, they provide an important service, and they provide rights to people that want them uh, and need them, who might not necessarily be me, so I can sort of support their rights by using uh, companies that generally support rights and freedoms in a wider capacity. And I think also paying for email, I think in and of itself, is a good thing, because if you're not paying for it, in a lot of cases, you know, you are the product, you are the thing being sold. So, whereas you can never be truly secure with email because it's a federalized service and you are effectively trusting Postio or whatever, whoever your email provider is, uh, with your personal data and your personal information and you're trusting them not to go snooping around in your email, if you're paying them, they've got much less incentive to do it than if they, you know, than if the service is free. If something is free, it always comes with a catch. Now, here are some of the things that Postio provide that I really do want to let you guys know about because there are actually some really good benefits to being a part of Postio. And this is all part of their one euro a month package. So yeah, with email, they do offer what generally what you'd expect to be a standard email solution. Now, I use a standard email client on my phone to also check that email. Sometimes I don't always necessarily feel like I want to be able to check my email on my phone, but sometimes it does, uh, it does help. Now, when it comes to things like uh, calendars and um, address books, um, Postio does have an open source solution for syncing your calendar and your phone contacts uh, to your phone and to your address book, which is really, really good. And they give you really good documentation and really good step-by-step -step, uh, tutorials on how you can achieve that. And it's all done using free and open source software as much as you can when it comes to using your phone. Of course, the phone is a Google service. I have an Android phone, and whereas you don't necessarily have to use the Google Play Store, you are kind of hamstrung in a lot of ways if you decide not to, to use it. Now, you can use F-Droid, and you can use F-Droid to uh, sync your contacts and your uh, calendar down to from your the Postio servers down to your phone, and it does a really, really, really good job at doing that, so I'm glad that that is available. It's completely seamless. My contacts are synced with my Postio account as they would be with a Google one, as is my uh, as is my calendar, and my calendar is particularly useful because if I'm out and about and I want to just make sure that I'm free on a given day, or I want to book something in so that um, you know, some you know, I want to book it. Well, you know how a calendar works. Then you know it allows me to do all that kind of stuff on the go. So that works really well for me as well, just as well as a Google service. Yes, it does take a little bit more know-how to set up. 
and you do have to download a like a free and open source application through the F-Droid store. I assume there would be an equivalent in the Play Store as well if you didn't want to use F-Droid. But overall, really happy with that solution, really happy with Postio. Their support is great. Their, so I've never had a problem with their service. They offer every encryption of, um, possibility under the sun. Um, it, they even do offer a, a, a notes system but I've uh, not necessarily used that. Um, yeah, I gotta say, um, I am incredibly happy and for one euro a month, uh, you can't say fairer than that. That's really, really quite good. So uh, what other Google services? I've got the list up here now. Google Drive. Okay, so there's no two ways about this. I've had to switch over to Dropbox. Dropbox is pretty much as good as Google Drive. They uh, don't offer as much space and they are a little bit more expensive, but for all intents and purposes, it does the job as well as I want it to. It's not a free and open source solution, although Google, uh, although Dropbox are a little bit better in terms of uh, contributing some kind of, you know, parts of their client, I think are open source in one degree or another. If you're looking for an open source solution, it really, you know, you are looking at a roll your own kind of thing. You can use something like SyncThing on multiple computers. Um, you can, you know, use, um, like next cloud or anything like that but these you know the, the, you're starting to get into rather complicated territory here and also if you're using things like home servers you're putting your security a little bit at risk um, i'm sure many of you guys watching this video are more than capable of putting together a uh, you know a really rock solid stable and secure server people like me less so so i do need to rely on other you know sort of pre-set up solutions to do that now that's not necessarily a problem because Dropbox is not one of the you know the big six uh, companies as far as I'm aware of. I think they do, they have used Amazon servers, but I think they're actually starting to use some of their own data centers now uh, to to manage their uh, storage. Um, don't quote me on that one, but yeah, generally speaking, pretty happy with Dropbox. It's nice that they've got a native Linux client as well. Um, so I've been uh, I've been working with them so much. Now when it comes to like backing up, uh, I do offline backup storage as a general rule of thumb. Uh, if it's something really, really, really important, I'll encrypt it into like a, a 7z file and I'll put it up on um, Dropbox. So uh, on to the next um, service is Photos. Now I never really actually used Google Photos because there are just so many other photo solutions out there. There is Flickr. Uh, I know a lot of you guys don't necessarily think particularly highly of uh, Yahoo and if I remember correctly now they've been bought out Verizon and I don't think I've heard anyone, anyone uh, sing the praises of Verizon. So um, you know, I could use Flickr. I'm not a particularly avid photographer, but I do have a photo blog and I've uh, put it up on Mastodon. So Mastodon, um, as you guys know, is um, it's a sort of an it's an open source implementation of a Twitter style social network, but it is federated and um, uh, and I've been using it. So I'll put my link to my my Linuxy main um, Mastodon account down in the description, as I often do with these kind of videos. But I also have a photo blog, which I, I guess I'll link down in the description as well. It's not really photo storage, and um, it probably doesn't have all the bells and whistles and features that you might get from Flickr or Google Photos. Um, and I'm sure like there are many, many other services there. But to be honest, Mastodon is just like, it's a free open source solution that I think is you know, really promising. And, um, and so just sticking my photos up on there is good enough. Um, but then again, like I say, I'm not like an avid photographer. I'm not a professional photographer. I just like to take photos of nature and stuff. And, um, and there ain't much more to it than that. Okay, so uh, also in terms of things like Google Hangouts uh, and the social media side of things, again, there are plenty of other options around. Uh, of course, when it comes to things like um, chat and project management and stuff like that, uh, I've got to be. Uh, I've got to say, I've been leaning a lot towards Discord when it comes to collaborating with like friends and family and um, you know work projects and things like that. It's not an open source solution that I really am completely ideal with. Uh, but it's a damn sight easier to use than IRC. So just sending out an invite le a link to friends and family is, um, or I say friends and family, I mean like work colleagues and so forth. Uh, it's a lot easier uh, than actually having to get them to sign up to like IRC and so forth. Um, and there are a few more features and it does integrate better. And, you know, you've got uh, a few more features that kind of work and it is a step away. However, my biggest issue with Discord is that like many other startups of its kind, it's going to have to at some point find a way to monetize itself. And that 
it's probably either going to mean costs, financial costs, or it does mean advertising. Now, I hope they do go down the financial cost route. There is also Slack as well. Now, I can't remember if Slack is owned by one of the big six tech companies, but um, but uh, but it, it you know it is a step away from Google at least. So. It also has to come with the caveat that Google could, or one of the big six uh, tech companies, could buy out a lot of these services at any time. Because whereas I am trying to take a step away from Google, I'm also trying to take a step away from from the big tech companies. Because quite frankly, when you you know you, when you line up Google against Microsoft or Amazon or Apple, um, the, the you know Google is probably one of the better ones out of that bunch. You know, Amazon might have a look in at some places like. You know, I I do start. Uh, I have started uh, streaming more on Twitch these days, which is kind of good. It's a nice alternative. But really, Twitch versus YouTube, it's it's you know, you're talking lesser of two evils territory here again. Um, and it, you know, if you're going to have to side with one, well, you know, try both. Have a, you know, have a have a foot in each camp. Um, so uh, I think that's about it in terms of like how I've managed to de Google. I certainly, uh, you know, one of the sort of the I've tried not to restrict myself too much in what I can do and sort of, uh, what, you know, whether or not making, you know, these decisions would cut me away from projects. And I think apart from YouTube, the only other Google service that I've not really managed to step away from thus far is the Google Play Store. The thing is, of course, running with, uh, running Linux, there are a lot of applications that uh, you know, you don't necessarily have compatibility with. Now, Linux is so much better than it used to be. So, so much better. And nowadays, of course, with web technology, a lot of stuff is just done through the browser. But there is the occasional um, time when I need something, you know, I need an application or I need to do something that is that doesn't fit within the Linux operating system. And Whenever that happens, usually my Android phone can pick up the difference. Usually there's an app that can sort of fix whatever problem it is. If it's a specific, um, you know, app that needs to be downloaded more often than not, then if it won't work on a Windows desktop, it will almost certainly work on an Android mobile. So that kind of gets me through uh, in, in those particular instances as well. And of course, a lot of my friends and family are actually on, uh, you know, those siloed social media sites or, you know, such things that, that you can't immediately, you know, you can't completely cut yourself away from. However, luckily enough, not many of these are in fact Google. So I'm, you know, I'm in a pretty good place when it comes to, to that all said and done. Also, just as an update on the browser situation, um, I don't use the Google Chrome or Chromium browser, uh, despite the fact that they were clearly, you know, like in terms of performance, better than their Firefox counterparts. Uh, the latest versions of Firefox, look, uh, you know, well, uh, what, uh, what version of Firefox am I on? right now. Um, 55. I'm on Firefox 55 and it runs like a dream. It runs, to be honest, it runs every bit as fast as Chromium used to. So um, I'm completely happy with it. Now, a little bit of a caveat. On the laptop there with the Intel graphics card, there is a lot of screen tearing when it's, uh, when Firefox is, uses hardware acceleration on video. That's a really big problem. It's a problem you guys have mentioned in the comments time and time again. The best way that I found of getting around that is to use the Brave browser. Now, the Brave browser is based on Chromium kind of technology, but they claim to have completely stripped it out of all of the problematic components. And, um, and of course, is completely free and open source as well. Some people do have some of the um, uh, some issues with the fact that it's got things like built-in ad blocking and so forth. And yeah, you know, so we can talk about the politics of the Brave browser, but in terms of just performance, if you're looking for a high performance browser that runs on Linux, that is comparable to Chrome or Chromium, Brave is really up there with the best of them at the moment. So uh, that's certainly a promising browser and um, and it's interesting to see how it comes along. But since I've got a NVIDIA graphics card on this main desktop machine here, uh, I don't get any screen tearing whatsoever from the Firefox browser. So. Again, sometimes it's a matter of like working out the field and, and um, uh, choosing which battles to win and whatnot. Um, but yeah, overall, I think I've managed to take a decent step away from Google and um, and do quite well for myself. I use uh, DuckDuckGo as my primary search engine. Now, a little interesting thing about DuckDuckGo is that if DuckDuckGo doesn't 
uh, pull up the search results that you're looking for immediately or right away or whatever. You can then just amend um, an exclamation mark and the letter G and then research and it will just then uh, pull up your results in Google. I've had to do that once or twice, so I've not managed to completely 100% in all cases manage to avoid the Google search engine because it's a really good search engine. And DuckDuckGo even say on their blogs that um, as much as they try and embrace the open source community as much as possible, building a search engine um, that's that's capable of crawling the internet itself requires the kind of resources that they just don't have and that small companies that are hoping to challenge Google will not have. So they do kind of have to ride on the back of uh, other larger indexing companies like Yandex and Yahoo and all those kind of guys as well. So whereas we're not completely free, I think the fight is still worthwhile. Um, so I'm going to wrap up there, but thank you very much for joining me. Uh, I thought it's been a while since I did one of these waffly uh, vlogs. And um, I do actually, uh, just at the end of the video, want to give a shout out to the Patreon, uh, Patreons, Patrons uh, for this channel because um, it is kind of easy for me to sort of uh, want to move you know, or to, to get distracted by other projects, to get distracted by uh, just all sorts of stuff that's happening in my life or other, even other channels here on YouTube that I, uh, that I work on. And um, I can never, I, I feel like I never really want to stray too far from this channel when there are people who are actually willing to uh, put real live cash towards it. And um, and those people, I think, um, you know, they, they sort of motivate, motivate me to make sure that, you know, I always provide um, as many videos as I can. And I do intend on upping my content now that we're approaching winter because... You know, so, so many distractions in the summer. There's so many distractions. But now that the uh, the days are drawing short, the weather's getting a bit gloomy, uh, I am probably going to be inside a lot more and enjoying uh, the company of you guys more. So um, expect more streams, both on YouTube and on Twitch, as well as um, more of these kind of videos. If you have any thoughts on topics uh, you'd like me to talk about, I would love to hear from you down in the comments section below because in a lot of cases, if I'm not making a video, it might be because I'm I'm drawing a blank on ideas. So uh, feel free to throw ideas my way. Also, I I'm looking for more distributions to try out. Of course, Ubuntu, the famed uh, GNOME Ubuntu is on its way and I will of course be reviewing that. But I've still got Ubuntu Mate Beta on that laptop. It's really, really good. It's amazing. It's amazing. Um, so, but but I I mean I was thinking about trying Pop OS, which is the System76 uh, Ubuntu derivative. God, I've been having a lot of trouble with that word lately as well. But yeah, uh, so I might give that a spin. But if you guys have any um, suggestions on uh, on which Linux operating systems look particularly interesting these days, um, then yeah, uh, please suggest some of those as well. But that's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.